morning. My name is Mike Donovan. I'm the United States Attorney uh, here in the Western District of Tennessee. I want to welcome all the members of federal, state, and local law enforcement, one of our partners today, uh, for this important announcement by Attorney General William Barr. General Barr has come to Memphis to announce a new national gun violence reduction initiative known as Project Guardian. We're excited to learn about this Project Guardian, and we look forward to working together with ATF and our other partners to implement this new initiative to reduce gun, gang, and violent crime in Memphis, West Tennessee, and across the country. Over the last two years, our office here has uh, dramatically increased the number of firearms and violent crime cases that we have charged, and we think it's making a real difference in public safety. Here in Memphis, we've engaged in a cooperative and focused approach with the Memphis Police Department, the Shelby County Sheriff's Office, the ATF, the FBI, and the Shelby County District Attorney's Office to focus on violent and gun crime. And as a result, the rate of armed carjackings and business robberies has decreased. In Jackson, here in West Tennessee, our office has coordinated with officers from the Jackson Police Department, the ATF, the FBI, to focus on violent street gangs. And with the help of the multi-agency gang unit here in Memphis, we have recently convicted 16 members of the Gangster Disciples Criminal Organization for violations of federal racketeering statutes, effectively disrupting and dismantling their structure here in West Tennessee. We know that most violent crime is committed by the use and possession of illegal firearms. And in our work, we can have no better partner than the ATF. They have dedicated additional resources here in West Tennessee, including a gun strike force, a new crime gun intelligence center, and the use of the cutting edge NIBIN technology and analysis that helps us respond to and solve shooting incidents quicker so that we can target and remove the most dangerous guns and the most violent offenders from our streets. Under, under the direction of, and leadership of Attorney General Barr, I have joined with my U.S. Attorney colleagues from across the country to aggressively carry out the priorities of the Department of Justice, reduce violent crime, and support our law enforcement partners. We know that Project Guardian will enhance and focus our work even more. Three of those U.S. attorneys are with us here today. Don Cochran from the Middle District of Tennessee, Cody Highland from the Eastern District of Arkansas, and Chad Lamar from the Northern District of Mississippi. Also joining us today for General Barr's announcement are leaders from a number of local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies who have worked with my office to uh, prosecute violent criminals. They include ATF Director Regina Lombardo and ATF Special Agent in Charge Marcus Watson, as well as ATF Assistant Director Tom Chittum and ATF Deputy Assistant Director George Lauder. Also with us are obviously Memphis Police Department Director Mike Rollins, Shelby County Sheriff Floyd Bonner Jr., Shelby County District Attorney General Andy Weirich, uh, Director David Roush of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, Chief Julian Weiser of the Jackson Police Department, Madison County Sheriff John Mayer, and Tipton County Sheriff Poncho Chamwe. Now it is my high honor and privilege to introduce Attorney General William Barr. Attorney General Barr has a long record of distinguished government service. A graduate of Columbia University and the George Washington University School of Law, he began his career in government service working in the Reagan White House on the domestic policy staff. Under President George Herbert Walker Bush, Mr. Barr served as the Assistant Attorney General for the Office of Legal Counsel from 1989 to 1990, the Deputy Attorney General from 1990 to 1991, and the 77th Attorney General of the United States from 91 to 93. General Barr returned to government service on February 14th of this year as the nation's 85th Attorney General, becoming one of only two people in the nation's history to serve twice as the Attorney General of the United States. Attorney General Barr, welcome to Memphis. Thank you very much. Thank you for your, your kind introduction. And I'm happy to be here in, in Memphis this morning, and I'd like to start off by recognizing and thanking uh, a number of my federal and uh, state and local colleagues who have done so much uh, to provide for the safety of this great city, uh, starting with the U.S. Attorney, Mr. Donovan, uh, and uh, Director Rollins. Uh, he, I was, uh, had the, the pleasant experience of spending some time with at the White House fairly recently, and uh, we had a lot of time together, and he was discussing some of the challenges here in Memphis and inviting me to, to 
visit. So I'm pleased to take you up on your, your invitation to come and visit us. And uh, also, uh, Amy Ryrick, uh, the district attorney, who I got to spend some time with recently at the Department uh, of Justice, was discussing some of the, uh, the problems that we're facing together, some of the challenges we're facing together uh, in uh, uh, combating uh, violent crime. And uh, I'd also like to recognize uh, uh, Reggie, Taylor Reggie, and his team at Lombardo of the, uh, Lombardo of the uh, ATF, of the ATF, uh, and all the men and women of ATF uh, and the uh, Memphis Police, which is uh, a good thing uh, here uh, to fight violent crime. Uh, I'm here today, as the U.S. Attorney said, to announce a new program to combat gun violence and uh, violent crime. And as he said, we call it Project Guardian. Uh, I've long believed that the primary duty of the government is protecting the safety of our citizens. Now, when I was last Attorney General, uh, the country had experienced an explosion in crime. By last year's Attorney General, 1992, uh, it was the peak of that explosion in crime. It was the peak of the history. The preceding decade had, had seen the trebling of violent crime in the United States. Uh, at that time, the federal government's involvement in working with state and local law enforcement to combat violent crime uh, was minimal. Uh, but things changed uh, in the early 90s, and we launched a series of initiatives that were focused on going after drug organizations, gangs, and guns that all fuel the violent crime. Uh, and we also greatly expanded our cooperation with state and local law enforcement uh, and uh, collaborated with them both on uh, strategy but also operations to join task forces. Now, a key initiative in those days was Project Trigger Lock, which targeted the most violent and dangerous offenders and used our very strong federal gun laws to put those people away for a long period of time, a resolution we couldn't really get from many of the state systems. And so working cooperatively with uh, the district attorney's offices and the police uh, in, in various cities, we were able to have these uh, cases referred to us and were able to use our strong uh, federal laws uh, to address them. Uh, when I left office, we had the program in, in, uh, under operation for 18 months, and we were uh, charging 1,000 gun offenders a month. So it started off as a very successful program. Now, over the next 25 years, fortunately, the time levels have fallen. The crime today, violent crime today, is half of what it was in 1992. But unfortunately, there are uh, some places where the crime has remained prevalent and, and high. In the last two years of the Obama administration, crime started going up again. Uh, but I'm happy to say that uh, in 1917, and uh, in 2017 and 2018, we were once again able to stop that and drive crime rates lower. In 2018, violent crime uh, decreased nationwide by 4%. But as I said, there's some places where we're not able to see those reductions. And Memphis is one of those cities uh, that has not benefited as much as it should from the general reduction in crime. Today in Memphis, the violent crime rate is about 5.3 times the national average, and the murder rate is 5.7 times the national average. And that's why I've come to, to Memphis, really, to announce uh, this, this new program, which really tries to take the old trigger lock program, which was not as consistently followed over the years as it should have been. Uh, in some administrations, it was de-emphasized. In some localities, some of the offices never really adhered to the program. What we're trying to do is take those principles uh, that were successful in the past and revamp this program, resuscitate it, and double down on it nationwide. Uh, this, so this is a national program. 
it will be in every district and the idea is to use our existing gun laws to incapacitate the most dangerous violent offenders now as most of you know in our project safe neighborhoods which is one of the flagship programs of the department of justice we do go after large felons but that program is regionally based we go after particular areas this is as I say nationwide in all communities and we are going to apply it with special vigor where gun violence is the highest in places where there's gun crime all agencies will be involved but ATF will be leading this effort there are going to be five basic elements to the program the first is working closely with our state and local colleagues to identify violators the people who we should be getting off the streets and prosecuting in the federal system to incapacitate them and reduce violent crime the second aspect will be a crackdown on evasions of the federal firearms laws and background checks we're going to enforce them with a vengeance we will step up prosecution on lie and cry buy and buy and straw purchase all evasions of the current background check system I was told that each year there are about a hundred thousand rejections denials under our background check system and we are going to be pursuing people who have lied on their application the other aspect of this the third is to share that information that is in cases where we don't prosecute it federally to ensure that these denials of people who have unsuccessfully tried to purchase firearms are referred to the state and local authorities for pursuing the fourth element is to provide a coordinated response to mental health denials of the 100,000 or so a year that are denied approximately 6,000 are for mental illness and we as part of this program will be making a concerted effort whenever we encounter information relevant to these individuals in the course of our federal cases we will first ensure that that information is put into the NIC system so that any effort to purchase firearms will have to deal with that information but we will also consult as to those individuals we identify and those individuals who were denied on the basis of mental illness we will consult with our state and local colleagues to determine whether there is available a mental health response and to try to ensure that this does not fall through the cracks simply because we don't have an immediate law enforcement basis to arrest the person we will still try to monitor the situation and interdict any any efforts by those individuals to obtain firearms and the fifth and final element the department and our state and local partners will work together to ensure effective use of ATF ATF crime gun intelligence centers and all related resources to maximize modern intelligence tools and technology such as cyber and firearms tracing investigation so this five prong framework will enable ATF and each United States attorney in collaboration with our state and local partners to fight gun crime in ways that fit the local circumstances and to leverage the power of the federal law the federal courts and in federal agencies in this effort there's going to be more coming there are additional steps we need to take and focus in on some of the cities where the violent crime rate remains high but this is our initial step and we think it will be effective in reducing violent crime so with that I'll turn it over to Reggie Lombardo of the ATF to lead the ATF in this honor well good morning thank
Thank you, General Barr. Uh, it's a pleasure, it's a great privilege for me to be here to stand next to you and next to uh, the leaders of this organization, but also the leaders in the law enforcement community. Director Rollins, I appreciate uh, your partnership and appreciate you also your friendship and your dedication to the people of Memphis, but also uh, to the Department of Justice, because you've been a great partner. I have to say your uh, unwavering commitment to this organization has been a pleasure to work with as far as staff and law enforcement. I've been in this position uh, for about quite a year and a year and a half, in this top position for not too long, but uh, I can say from the day I met you, you have been a believer in law enforcement. You've been a believer in backing law encorcement, especially uh, the Department of Justice and all the entities that come under them. So, so thank you. I have to say ATF's most essential mission is to make America safer. And that is by identifying, arresting, and supporting the prosecution of the trigger pullers and those guns that are used to terrorize our communities. We target the traffickers as well as the trigger pullers. When I say we go after the traffickers, that's the source of the weapons, the weapons that are used to commit violent crimes. Going after the source of those weapons is cutting that pipeline of firearms that are used in these shootings. Project Guardian is very focused on our ability to be able to do so. And I have to say, ATF is all in. We are all in on this critical initiative. It is, at its core, Project Guardian focuses on strengthening one of the most highly valued tools available to ATF in our mission to reduce firearms violence. And that is our partnerships as well. Project Guardian enhances information sharing and coordination among local, state, tribal, and federal law enforcement agencies, as well as federal and state prosecutors, and with agencies involved in providing mental health services. We know from experience that these partnerships truly work. Partnerships that are particularly unique to ATF, using our Crime Gun Intelligence Centers, our ATF NIGIN system, and our firearms traces, which are conducted by our National Tracing Center. The results speak for themselves. In the past two years, we have seen record-breaking federal firearms prosecution and falling violent crime rates. Yet, despite the progress we have made in some areas, like Memphis, we continue to experience unacceptable rates of firearms violence. Guardian is focused on bringing to justice those who continue to commit gun crimes and those who enable them. As the Attorney General emphasized, we're going to come after you. My pledge to the Attorney General, my pledge to Director Rollins, City of Memphis, but my pledge to the country is that I am dedicated to driving your mission, your vision, and Project Guardian to fruition. You will have no better partner than ATF. And now, Director Rollins, if you wouldn't mind saying a few words. Thank you. Well, good, good afternoon, General. Thank you for coming to Memphis. Uh, Director Lombardo has been a, a great partner in ATF, has, has toured with us with the creation of the Crime Gun Intelligence Center, the grants that we've received from the COPS office, the technical assistance. So the Department of Justice has, has been there to support it. We know that the, the violent crime is way too high in Memphis, and uh, we're going to do everything we can do to make our city safe and to uh, fulfill our number one obligation. And that's just reduce uh, gun violence. And we welcome uh, all of our partners that are in this room, that are standing uh, with us to continue to partner together to make not only Memphis safe, Shelby County safe, and make West Tennessee one of the safest communities in the nation. So thank you for coming, and uh, thank you for allowing uh, these great men and women to partner with us. At this time, we'll be glad to uh, take any questions that you may have about Project Guardian. <clears throat> yes, prior to Labor Day, we had put together uh, a legislative 
package as proposed and it just included a number of things that had to be accomplished legislatively and also a series of operational initiatives such as project guardian unfortunately our discussions on the legislative aspects of this have been sidetracked because of the impeachment process on the hill and so we are going forward with all the operational steps that we can take that do not require legislative action obviously we would like to have some more resources put into this and we have asked Congress for additional resources including more ATF agents and US Marshals but this we think really has a big effect on violent crime but and we certainly are always willing to pursue legislative measures that will enhance the fight against violent crime but right now it just does not appear that Mr. Washington our attorney general will be willing to negotiate with Congress so this the president fully supports project guardian you say the inspector general well I can't get into details the inspector general Horowitz is a fiercely independent investigator and superb investigator who who I think much of this particular investigation in a professional way and I think that his work when he does do it will be the better for the department it's been reported and it's my understanding that in the room a number of people who were mentioned in the report are having an opportunity to write private comments on this state of this report and after that process is over it will be very short and of course will be issued that's what the inspector general has said well we Department of Justice issued a statement concerning the transcript of that call and I'm not going to go beyond that I'm here to discuss why we think the inspector general is worthy well in general you know this has been a problem that has plagued law enforcement for a long time and in general there's more flexibility under the federal system to deal with predatory juveniles than there than there is under a lot of the state systems so it's the ability of the federal government to bring its tools to bear when there is a even a dangerous juvenile offender we have much more flexibility with those sorts of investigations so I think looking longer term we're going to have to come up with a better way of dealing with juvenile juvenile offender offenders in this country if you're if you're talking about you know press reports that he asked me to to have a news conference the fact is I don't remember any such request in fact my recollection is that I told the White House that we would do what we would normally do and that is to issue a press statement which we did and that was not initial there was no push back on that
this is a replay of, of things that have happened over the years, over, over the last several decades. During the crack epidemic back in the 80s and back in the 80s, we found that drug gangs would frequently use minors to conduct a lot of their business and their shootings. So this is nothing new. This happens from time to time. And, in, and part of the response to that was the infusion of a lot of resources uh, into the program uh, to, uh, to try to, in, to, try to uh, intervene early enough in the cycle to, to get these young people away from a life of crime. A lot of those programs were put into place. Unfortunately, they haven't been over the years, and we're seeing, again, another cycle of this sort of happening. Uh, but I certainly uh, have always believed that the only way to protect against these juveniles and these targets of, of a life of crime is to come upon them when they're young offenders. It, it simply being early and impose consequences very early in the cycle. And I think we have to look at the criminal justice system at all levels, particularly in the states, which is the primary system and have to be able to that, <clears throat> that is more responsive to this problem and uh, does uh, effectively deal early in the cycle with juvenile offenders. Uh, at the federal level, we're always willing to, to examine where our current laws are.